Now in these videos I talk a lot about the game design of Super Mario titles and how enemies evolved when it comes to that. And also their design and story of course. However Nintendo usually doesn't mess too much with that. And one thing that is crucial to all of the games is platforming. And throughout the years Nintendo has tried to make that more and more interesting. For example being able to jump on enemies to get a small boost to your jump. Something like that is small but actually played a pretty big role in all of the games. And as you could have guessed, they also introduced items that helped with this. And one famous example of this is the trampoline. And today we will finally cover it in an evolution of video. Because surprisingly enough, they had quite a big impact on the games. Especially the bonus collectibles. Now let's see how they evolved when it comes to story, use, design and gameplay. Now surprisingly enough, the story of the trampoline started before there was even a Super Mario Bros game out there. Because they were first seen in the Donkey Kong Arcade titles. They first appear as an obstacle in Donkey Kong Arcade's third level, and then followed up to Donkey Kong Jr's second level. And it can be used to jump over a gap, but can also be used as a shortcut to reach the hovering platforms above it. So it's certainly useful. However, this was only the beginning of it all. While not a whole lot changed in the very first Super Super Mario Bros game where it was seen in, known as Lost Levels, the next game did change things significantly. In Super Mario World, something drastically changed. You're now able to carry one, an ability that would be carried on to future games, including the new Super Mario Bros series. Now this sounds like a change that doesn't matter all that much, but actually it had a huge impact on the collectibles and alternative routes seen in the levels. All of a sudden you could take a trampoline with you to a place where you could use it to get to certain out of reach places. Here Nintendo usually hides dragon coins and other special collectibles. And so at the end of the day they were mostly tied to stuff like that. And this wasn't the only item that had a role like this. The P-Switch had a similar fate and was mostly used to create puzzles and small challenges. In general stuff like this was seen in the Super Mario titles ever since the release of Super Mario World. That game was truly revolutionary and changed the series in multiple ways. And quite significant items like the trampoline noticed that the most. Now in the next game we saw them in, which is Super Mario Sunshine, the same effect was seen. Here they shrink when they come into contact with water, and then you're able to carry them around, allowing you to reach various high up places. Although, now that I think about it, it was rarely used in that game. Personally, I have never ever used it in Super Mario Sunshine, so its role was incredibly small. But in general, they went from an item that was fixed in place, and therefore not so useful, to a mobile jump enhancer that has a huge impact on the level's design, and especially if you want to explore it fully. And we saw this again and again in titles like New Super Mario Bros, New Super Mario Bros Wii, and New Super Mario Bros U. All of them took the established formula from Super Mario World and changed it slightly here and there. So in the end, a lot of the later 2D games weren't that exciting or surprising when it comes to the new uses for the trampoline. However, all of that was quite different in the 3D titles. Here Nintendo experimented a lot more with them. For example in Super Mario Galaxy 1 and 2 they played it extremely safe by just putting them in a certain spot and nailing them to the ground. That's right, you can't carry these around whatsoever. But on the other hand, they also did some other stuff that was really cool. And personally, I didn't even expect this because they usually never do this with items like this. They created an entire enemy around this one item. And I gotta say, it was an amazing idea from Nintendo. The enemy I'm talking about is the Spring Topman, which appears in both the first and second Galaxy games. It only appears when you spin a wheel, causing it to appear through a small black hole-like vortex. And a similar robot known as a jump garter is also seen in the game, and can spawn top minis. Now a spring topman can use a spin attack which doesn't damage you, but it will push you away. Possibly into other hazards that will hurt you. However when you jump on it, a spring will pop out of the top and you can now use them to jump higher up. Which is similar in a way to jumping on a spin drift in Super Mario 64. That thing also gives you a boost in height. Although that enemy is clearly not a trampoline or a spring of sorts. 
In the end, stuff like this was used to get to certain out-of-reach places, or to get to items that could help you in some way. So all of a sudden, a spring couldn't be picked up and taken everywhere, but you actually had to lead an enemy to the place you wanted them, and then you had to beat them. And once you had done all of this, you were able to progress, or finally get to that one special item. It made things more complex, and certainly a lot harder, because now you also had to deal with this enemy, aside from just finding the place where you could use it. Still, it wasn't some incredible challenge you had to overcome, but it did make things more, let's say, interesting. And in Super Mario 3D World, this trend continued, because they created yet another enemy around the whole trampoline concept. Because in Super Mario 3D World, we see an enemy springboard known as the Hop Chop, and they aren't as cut and dry as you would imagine. They appear in groups, and here you have to find the correct Hop Chop that doesn't simply fall apart, who will turn into a functional springboard upon defeat. And when they turn into one, they function almost identically to their appearances in other Mario games which means that they can be carried around with the run button, thrown, jumped on, and hitting them with a ground pound will cause the player to jump extra high. And after a while, they will turn back into a hop chop, just like the spring topman from Super Mario Galaxy. So again, this concept was used. However, funny enough, this one is quite different from the previous one. It's more aggressive in terms of its look and behavior, and it can also be picked up again, which makes moving it a lot easier. Aside from that, the fight also got harder and more complex, because of the fake versions seen together with it. So the trampolines started to live their own life. Literally, they became a living enemy that you must beat so you can use it. To be honest, I didn't expect this. However, it does fit. In some of the earlier games, jumping on enemies already gave a boost to your jump. So why not take this to a completely new level, while also introducing some new and interesting enemies? However, sadly enough, they didn't use this a whole lot. Sure, Super Mario Galaxy featured quite a lot of spring topmen, but Super Mario 3D World wasn't as dedicated. In this game, we only saw the hop chops in a number of levels, which is a bit of a shame in my opinion. They could have certainly used them more, making even more interesting levels around this odd mechanic. But after all of this, the whole concept of a trampoline enemy completely disappeared. There weren't any other games that did something like this. Super Mario Odyssey is a good example. However, the normal trampolines did return in other games, of course. And the next titles in line that gave them a chance to shine were the Super Mario Maker games. We saw them in literally every version. Think of Super Mario Maker, Super Mario Maker for the 3DS, and Super Mario Maker 2, where they can be placed as an item in any level. And now, the players were in charge which certainly made a difference. Mario and various objects such as Bill Blasters can bounce on them, and they can also be carried in all styles except Super Mario Bros. And interestingly enough, they can also be turned sideways in editing mode. In this form, however, they cannot be carried around in any style except by Super Mario Bros 2 Mario in the Super Mario Bros style. Now, while some of these changes sound quite useless or small, they actually had quite a big impact on the levels made by Super Mario fans. If you play some of the levels currently found in Super Mario Maker 2, you will see what I mean. A good example of this is the Mario Kart theme levels where you use the new Koopa car. Here you come across a lot of sideways springs that will keep you on the track and do so very well. This is just one example, because to be honest, you can use them in a million ways and I'm not gonna list them all. However, one other type of level that heavily relies on them is the automatic Mario levels where you do nothing. Here you go from the start to the very end without you, the player, doing anything to get there. And as you can imagine, a trampoline is very handy for this. So again, things became more interesting when the players got to mess around with the springs. But, after all of this, the journey of the trampoline ended. For years upon years, they were used for all kinds of crazy things, mostly exploring levels and finding secrets within them. And in time, that stuff became more and more challenging, but sometimes also easier because Nintendo didn't want to make finding the secrets too hard. A good example of this is Super Mario 3D World, but regardless of that, their role was certainly unique. Nintendo has even done things with them that I personally would have never expected. They never make a full-fledged enemy out of a normal item. That's incredibly rare, and maybe we will see them once again 
in the future. Thank you so much for watching this video, I hope you enjoyed, be sure to leave a like, hit the subscribe button and the bell, and leave a comment, naughty or nice.